the Imam Malik rahimahullah, Malik ibn Anas, I'll give you one narration, that's it. You know, Malik ibn Anas, he, you know, he wouldn't step, you know, when he wanted to relieve himself in Medina, you know, he couldn't bring himself to the fact that he had to do that. He went outside the boundaries of Medina to relieve himself. And he never walked around the streets, you know, saying that I'm a lover of the Prophet, lover of the Prophet. He was asked, why did you do that? And what did he say? He said, how can I relieve myself in that city where the Prophet Ali, he walked on the streets? How can I do that? How can I do that? You know, that had substance behind it. That had weight behind it. He wouldn't narrate hadith standing. He would narrate hadith sitting on the floor. He would perfume himself. He would perform wudu. He would do everything in terms of humility and respect and other. And he only came out with it when he was asked. And when he did come out, he said it with humility. He said it with humility. He never rode an animal in Medina because he feared that you know the animal's hooves would step on where the Prophet Ali his salatu wasalam stepped with his own blessed feet. This had substance. This had weight. This had weight. And 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 you find that you know, you know you find Imam Malik is you know he's a man of of, of utmost love. Utmost love. Whatever you look at his life, he was it was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know, you know, at the time where 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 he was under the caliphate of uh, Abu Ja'far al Mansur, you know, the, the caliph at that time he told Malik, you know, this is what he called love. Love through it extreme. Right? But he said to him, Malik, that you know, the hadith which you are narrating of the divorce or the coerced. Stop narrating that because politically it would undermine me. He told him, What did Malik say? So this is the hadith of Rasulullah, I will never go against it. This is what he said. And look what he, look what the caliph done to him. The caliph, it's amazing what the caliph done. Because politically he was motivated to get something else out there. But because Malik narrating a certain hadith, he knew that he was going to undermine and people will leave his bay'ah and his allegiance. So what did he do to shut Imam Malik up? To keep him quiet, he sent people to torture him. Amazing. To keep him stop narrating a single hadith. One single hadith which he wanted to narrate. What did they do to him? They dislocated his shoulder. They shaved his beard off. They paraded him around the streets of Medina. You know, they treated him like a dog. And, and after the end of that, they said to Malik, you know, Malik, this can all stop if you stop narrating this one hadith. And what did he say? What did he say? He said, those of you who know me, know me. Those of you who don't know me, then know that my name is Malik ibn Anas, and the hadith I will never go against. How beautiful is that? He went through everything. Everything he went through. Yet he came out on top. That's what you call love. Love you know, isn't just by, by, by verbal affirmation. It's through action. It's through actions. We need proactive Muslims nowadays. You know, the biggest jihad which we have nowadays in the West, the biggest struggles which we have in the, nowadays, you know, you look at the media today, you know, it's all about going to, uh, fleeing to, you know, the ISIS regime and going to XYZ place and dying in the name of Islam and in the name of so-called, uh, you know, Islam. You know, our biggest struggle in the West today, right, isn't dying, it's living as Muslims. That's what it is. It's living as Muslims, not just merely dying just like that. One after the other, we will eventually die anyway. But it's as living as Muslims, what counts? What counts? What counts? But let me just finish off this point of Imam Malik uh, rahimahullah, that he went through so much. So much through, for the love of the Prophet alayhi salam. And there's a promise of Allah in the Quran where he says that through hardship comes ease, right? There's a, that's a promise of Allah. Whatever hardship you go through, Allah always affirms that there's going to come ease in your life. Be it in this life or the afterlife, there will come ease. You know, uh, you know, through, through, you know, through sabr, Allah promises there will always be ajr. And through wafa, there will always be jaza. Always, always. And you know, they say that, in, in, in terms of, of, of Imam Malik, right? He went through so much, so much, just to preserve one hadith of Prophet Through his actions, not through his words, through his actions. 
You know, he, he was so loyal to the Prophet alayhi salam, even after his life, that you find that, you know, his, 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 his wafa and loyalty is unmatched, unparalleled. And you find that, you know, what was his jaza for this thing? What was his reward for such loyalty of having his arms dislocated? You know, having been paraded around the streets of Medina, being ridiculed in front of everybody. You know, being physically tortured just so he can stay loyal to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. What was his reward? And you pick up the books of biography. Right? And you hear, and you, and, you, and, you, and you find that Imam Malik is recorded to have said that ma bittu laylatan illa ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was his jaza. That was his reward. That he says that I never slept a night. I never slept a night. Now I could go through all the pain, all the hardship, all the physical and mental and emotional abuse. I can go through all of that. Why? Because my reward is greater. And what is that? That I never slept a night in my life except that I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single night he saw Rasulullah. Every single night. And that's what you call reward. Reward through what? Through a person's actions. Not just mere slogans. Not just mere entertainment shows. Which we have, you know, it's unfortunate. But it's the truth. It's the truth. That we made our maulids now into an entertainment show. Come see a celebrity, go away, and that's it. Don't take any, any, any benefit or any real substance away from it. And I hope, you know, I hope, you know, that from tonight, you know, from, from the various talks which the scholars have given here on the panel, you know, we take something back with us tonight. You know, be it, you know, trying to act upon something very, very simple of changing ourselves. You know, and perfecting our character. You know, perfecting our, you know, the way we conduct our lives, the way we carry ourselves. You know, be it something, but take away something tonight. Take away something tonight. I leave with these few words. Assalamu alaikum. Just to comment on the point that Ahmad Sahib made about the beauty of the Messenger Wasallam. The reason why the Sahaba Ikram used to say that the Prophet Wasallam was the most beautiful being that they had ever seen, it was because the Prophet Wasallam was created to perfection. And there's numerous ahadith which talk about how the Prophet Wasallam used to look. And some of the features have been mentioned like the Prophet Sallallahu's eyes used to be quite large. The Prophet Sallallahu's eyelashes used to be quite long. You know, all signs of beauty. The Prophet Sallallahu had a perfect nose. He had a perfect set of teeth. He wasn't neither too tall or too short. The the Prophet Sallallahu's scent was better than any perfume they had smelled. These were qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given. To his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sahaba Ikram used to say, they used to look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba Ikram used to write poetry in praise of the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The most famous of Hassan bin Thabit. And he was also one of those companions that Hamad Sa was talking about, Malik bin Anas, who now used to relieve himself in the city of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The person to start this was Hassan bin Thabit. He now used to relieve himself in the city of the Prophet ﷺ because he felt like it was disrespect. So in his very famous poetry, which you've heard many times, he says, وَأَحْسَنُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَ قَدْتُ عَيْنِي He says to the Messenger ﷺ, My eye has never seen anybody more handsome than you. وَأَجْمَلُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِدِ النِّسَاءُ then Hassan bin Thabit starts off with his own opinion. He says, min kalam aini, that My eye has never seen anybody more handsome than you. People can put an objection and say to Hassan, well, you have not left the Arab Peninsula. How do you know that there may be other beautiful people in other parts of the world? So he mentions, secondly, he says, Wa ajmalu min kalam nisa'u, just to make sure 
that he's getting his point across. He says, there is no woman that has given birth to anybody more beautiful than you. Then he carries on by saying, that you have been created free from all defects. From all faults, all problems, you have been created to perfection. When I look at you, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it looks like you had a choice of the way you would want to be created. It looks like when I see you, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it looks like Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asked you when He was creating you, He asked you, how do you want me to make your body? How would you like me to make your face? Because it was such perfection, Hassan bin Thabit had to say these verses and poetry of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <coughs> Inshallah, just before I call up the final speaker, there's a few announcements. Uh, there's a few announcements that I feel that's important to make, which I was supposed to make at the beginning, but they left my mind. <coughs> the first one is the charity dinner that we had in October. Just to remind everybody and those that were not there who don't know about it, we alhamdulillah raised over 530,000 pounds. Less money came from yourselves. There were many people that were involved in this project, um, so I'm not going to take too many names. Um, there, there's many members of our community that were involved in this project. They worked tirelessly, and it was because of them, <coughs> and because of yourselves, this money was raised. In particular, I'd like to mention our chairman Naeem Saab's name because it was under his leadership that this program ran smoothly. It was under his leadership that we raised 530,000 pounds, alhamdulillah. And the new mosque is progressing at the moment. Um, those of you who have came in, you've seen that concrete is being laid at the moment. This is the next stage. Also, inside the masjid, the partitions have been put up. Khalid Saab has worked tirelessly day and night for that. And if you walk into the masjid now, you can see it actually taking shape. But again, the sad thing is the hall looks really, really big. And the, the scary thing is that it's going to remain empty when this new masjid opens. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a tawfiq to fill this masjid, inshallah. And um, the second announcement is that for our children's classes, um, those parents that are here, inshallah, for this week, we're giving a one-week holiday. This is a milad or a maulid one-week holiday, which will include next Monday also, because next Monday we have a ladies-only maulid, which is taking place at 3.30 p.m. So if you can have that news um, to your households, next Monday, 3.30 p.m., a ladies-only maulid, so the the kids, the kids will be off again next Monday. Um, and also, inshallah, there will be a Mawlid event which will be taking place in Jamia Masjid Tajdar in Medina, which is in Dundee. Qibla Shah Sahib, Ijaz Shah Sahib is the Imam of that Masjid. This Mawlid will be taking place on the 27th of December, which is this Sunday, inshallah, and it will begin at 6.15 p.m. after Isha Namaz. So that's Jamia Masjid Tajdar in Medina. Qibla Shah Sahib is the Imam there in Dundee. Um, and that Mawlid will start at 6.15 p.m. inshallah. Uh, uh, there will also be a Jashne Ahmadi Rasul Mahfil for the ladies, which will be taking place on the 3rd of January at 2 p.m. So the 3rd of January, 2 p.m., which is a Sunday. This is a moment for the ladies in Dundee, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, there will also be a maulid on the 27th, so another maulid on the 27th, which will be taking place in Falkirk. Uh, Mawlana Hasnain Sahib is the Imam um, there, uh, and good luck on try to attend Dundee and Falkirk <laughs> at the same time. Uh, so these are the few maulids that will be taking place. Um, uh, just a few <coughs> other announcements. Um, I want to take this opportunity because everybody's here. My 
ideology is that whatever I do in the masjid, I like to make it as transparent as possible because it's yourselves, the community, who pay money towards this masjid to run this mosque. So the mosque belongs to yourselves, to the community. You have a right to know exactly what's happening here, what the imam is doing. So just to tell you our progress, <coughs> since we came six months ago, Alhamdulillah, our main objective was to sort out the education in the masjid. So when I came myself, there were a very few students um, and that was because there was a language barrier between the teacher and the students. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, we have over 40 students now. We have an active youth club that happens every single Saturday where we have a pool table that's at the back there, table, tennis table, where we put them in this main hall. Children come to the masjid, they play their games, they also pray their salah here and we give them a short reminder so that they can benefit. We also have a over 16 fit class, Sharia class, which happens every Monday. That's been going on for the past five weeks now. Alhamdulillah, very, very successful. The brothers have told me they enjoy that very much. So um, interfaith meetings, <coughs> we've also been going to so that we can, that's a way of that way. If you go to interfaith meetings, other religions would then respect your religion. They will then start coming to your place of worship. That's the only way you can do it. If you go to their place of worship, they will come to your place of worship. So again, it is not haram for you to, if there's an interfaith meeting, it's not haram for you to go into the church to attend that interfaith meeting. As long as you sit in that meeting and you sit for interfaith purposes, you are allowed to go in these places of worship. And it's good, it's good da'wah. It shows that Muslims are understanding people. You be nice to them, they're going to be nice to you. If you disown them, they're never going to come to you. It's, it's common sense. So try as much as you can. I'll put these interfaith meetings on Facebook. Um, it wasn't just priests and other religious leaders that were there. There were a lot of common people that were there. Most of them were Christians. It would have been nice nice to see Muslims sitting there also and inshallah in the future this is in the next two or three weeks we have a meeting with the local MP who wants to discuss the situation that happened in Paris a while back now and inshallah we will give you the results for that and we were also we also had a TV documentary that was filmed in this masjid uh, which will be shown in British on the British Muslim TV I would put that information up on WhatsApp and Facebook and it's, it's coming on the 11th of January but they haven't told us exactly what time they'll be coming on when I get the information for that I will show you that it's a documentary about the new masjid and this masjid here inshallah <coughs> inshallah just to move on to the final speech our special guest of honor that has came from Bradford many of you I uh, know him from before uh, and I hope inshallah that you benefit from his talk. Inshallah for the final speech I'd like to call for from Bradford of his Sami Sab. Nare Takbir, Nare Risalat, Nare Risalat, Jashne Eid Miladun Nabi. Glenn Rothis would be on the 3rd of January. At 7 p.m. after Isha, the poster is actually up um, on the back. I put that up on the notice board on your way out. If you can have a look at that, 3rd of January, 7 p.m. John Fermlin, 17th, 17th, 17th of January. So Glenn Rothis, the 3rd of January, 7 p.m. And John Fermlin, 17th of January, inshallah, 7 p.m. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, the one who is 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 the one who والأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين
Before I go further, I really apologize in particular from Hazrat Shah Saab for being presented in such a way that I am a special guest of honor, this and that. Indeed, they are special guests of honor, and it is because of them that we are gaining blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this masjid. I can say more further, but inshallah I will be constricting my talk to only a few durations because khayrul kalami ma qalla wa dalla. Quran Majid, Furqan Hamid ki jo ayat mubarka mene آپ کے سم نے ترابط کرنے کا شرف حاصل کیا ہے شیخ محقق عبد الحق محدث دلوی رحمت اللہ علیہ نے اپنی شورہ آفاق تصریف مدارج النبوہ کی ابتداء عام رسمی طریقہ سے نہیں تھی اس طرح کے ایک قاتب کا طریقہ ہوتا ہے ایک محرد کا طریقہ ہوتا ہے وہ بسملہ لکھتا ہے اس کے بعد پھر اللہ کی حمد لکھتا ہے پھر رسول اللہ علیہ السلام کے اوپر درود و سلام پڑھتا ہے اللہ کے محبوب کی نات لکھتا ہے آپ نے قرآن کریم کی سورہ الحدید کی یہی آیت نمبر تین لکھ دی اور اس کے بعد آپ یو رقم تراز ہوتے ہیں کہ یہ جو میں نے صرف ایک ہی قرآن کریم کی آیت لکھی ہے اور نہ ہی اللہ کی حمد و سنہ لکھی ہے نہ ہی رسول اللہ کی نات لکھی ہے وہ اس لیے کہ اللہ کی قرآن کی صرف یہی ایک آیت اللہ کی حمد کو بھی بیان کرتی ہے رسول اللہ کی نات کو بھی بیان کرتی ہے اسی کے اندر ذکر خدا بھی موجود ہے اسی کے اندر ذکر مصطفیٰ بھی موجود ہے اسی سے آپ کو اللہ تعالیٰ کی حمد و سنہ بھی مل جائے گی اسی سے اللہ کے محبوب علیہ السلام کی تعریف و توصیف بھی مل جائے گی اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ نے اپنی کلام مجید کے اندر فرمایا کہ وہی اول ہے وہی آخر ہے وہی ظاہر ہے اور وہی باطن ہے کریم آقا علیہ السلام کے اتنے کمالات ہیں اتنی صفات ہیں کہ لا تعدو ولا تحسا کہ جو شمار کے اندر نہیں آسکتے احاطہ تحریر کے اندر احاطہ تحریر کے اندر نہیں آسکتے کوئی تقریر یا تحریر ان کو مکمل طریقے سے بیان نہیں کر سکتی مگر اللہ کے محبوب علیہ السلام کی ایک شان اور ایک فضیلت یہ بھی ہے کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے ہر شیع کو پیدا کرنے سے پہلے اللہ اپنے محبوب کے نور کیوں پیدا کرنے سے پہلے ہر چیز کو پیدا کرنے سے پہلے اپنے محبوب کی تخلیق فرمائی حضرت ابو اسامہ روایت کرتے ہیں سعید بن ابی عروبہ سے وہ روایت کرتے ہیں حضرت قطادہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ سے وہ کہتے ہیں کان رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اذا قرأ و اذ اخذنا من النبیین میتاقہم و منک و من روح و ابراہیم و موسیٰ و عیسیٰ بن مریم و اخذنا منہم میتاقا غلیظا فقال بدئ بی فی الخیر وکنت آخرہم فی البعث حضرت قطالہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ روایت کرتے ہیں اللہ کے محبوب علیہ السلام جب قرآن مجید کی ایک آیت مبارکہ وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ کی تلاوت کرتے تو اس آیت مبارکہ کی تلاوت کرنے کے بعد آپ یہ فرماتے کہ بودی ابی فی الخیر کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے میرے ساتھ ہر ابتدا کی ہے اور ہر خیر کی ابتدا کی ہے اور اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے میرے ساتھ اپنی مخلوق کی ابتدا کی ہے وَكُنْتُ آخِرَهُمْ فِي الْبَعْضِ اور اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے نبوت کے اندر مجھے سب سے آخر کے اوپر مبعوث فرمایا ہے 
امام بیحقی رحمت اللہ علیہ نے دلائل النبوہ کے اندر اور دلائل النبوہ کے نام سے دو کتابیں مشہور ہیں ایک ابو نعیم کی دلائل النبوہ ہے اور ایک امام بیحقی رحمت اللہ علیہ کی دلائل النبوہ ہے مدنی صاحب تصریف فرما رہے ہیں اس کا مذہب ہے یہ بات ہے بغیر شک و شبہ کے پکی اور سچی ہے یہ ادھر سے جب تصریف آ جائے نا ان کے گھر میں بہت بڑا قدم خانہ ہے میں نے زیارت کی ہے بدن یا آپ نے کی ہے یا نہیں کی ہے بارہ امام بحقی رحمت اللہ علیہ نے اپنی تصنیف دلائل النبوہ کے اندر اور امام بزار نے اپنی مستند اپنی مستند کے اندر یہ حدیث مبارکہ جناب سیدنا ابو حدیرہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ کی مربیات سے لے کے آتے ہیں اور بتاتا چلوں کہ جناب سیدنا ابو حدیرہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ صحابہ اکرام کی جماعت میں سے وہ ہستی ہیں کہ جنہوں نے سب سے زیادہ اللہ کے محبوب کی حدیثیں روایت کی ہیں سب سے زیادہ اللہ کے محبوب کے فرامین کو اس امت تک پہنچایا ہے اور کچھ لوگ کو اعتراض بھی اس کے اوپر ہوا کچھ لوگوں نے اظہار تعجب بھی کیا اور آپ نے اس کے اعتراض کا جواب بھی دیا دراصل صحابہ اکرام کے دو گروہ ہیں ایک گروہ مہاجرین کا گروہ کہلاتا ہے وہ حضرات کہ جو کریم آقا علیہ السلام کے ساتھ اور کچھ پہلے مکہ کی وادی سے نکل کر مدینہ طیبہ کی طرف ہجرت کی وہ مہاجرین کہلاتے ہیں اور جو صحابہ جو صحابہ اکرام مدینہ طیبہ کی ندیم صاحب کی تھے میری تو خیر ہے مگر ہے کہ کارشاہ صاحب نہ استنار کم نہیں چلنے لگا انہوں نے اسے توڑنے تھوڑا دے خیار رکھنا بیسے میری خیار رکھنا ماشاءاللہ نوید صاحب You know, since long, he been actually sorting out his mic and a few other things in Masjid. I pray for him that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala echo his voice in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala echo his voice in Jannah. Khair. Janabe, Ansar ka giro ho hai, ke jab kareem aaka alayhi salatu wa salam, Madinah Tayyiba ki taraf hijrat kar ke aaye, aur hijrat aap ne Madinah Tayyiba ki taraf ki, تو جن انسار نے نہ صرف اپنے دلوں کے اندر بلکہ اپنے گھروں کے اندر بھی اور اپنے مال کے اندر بھی اللہ کے محبوب کی خدمت کی اور ہر شہر کے ساتھ اللہ کے محبوب کی رہی بلکہ اللہ کے محبوب کے ساتھ آنے والے ہر 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 محادر صحابی کی انہوں نے مدد کی نہ صرف ان کو اپنے دل کے اندر جگہ دی بلکہ اپنے گھروں کے اندر بھی جگہ دی اور ان کے اسی عیسان کی وجہ سے ان کی اسی مدد کی وجہ سے یہ ان کو انعام اللہ اور اس کے رسول کی بارگاہ سے ملا کہ ان کو انسار کا لقب ملا دین کے مددگار ہونے کا لقب ملا اللہ کے محبوب کے مددگار ہونے کا لقب ملا اور یہ دو صحابہ کی گروہ مہاجرین اور انسار ان میں سے مہاجرین اکثریت کے اندر کاروبار کرتے تھے اور وہ زیادہ تر بزنس کرتے تھے غلہ کی خرید و فروخت کرتے تھے اور انسان سے ہاوے کے راہ وہ زیادہ تر کھیتی باری کرتے تھے اور باغات کا ان کا کام تھا جب کسی اعتراض کرنے والے نے اعتراض کیا جناب ابو حریر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے اوپر کہ آپ بہت زیادہ حدیثیں بیان کرتے ہیں آپ کے پاس بہت زیادہ حدیث موجود ہوتی ہے حالانکہ دوسرے لوگ بھی حضور کے ساتھ رہے ہیں وہ اتنی روایت نہیں روایت کرتے وہ اتنی حدیث نہیں بیان کرتے جناب سیدنا ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے ہر کسی کو گناہ بنا کے کہا کہ سنو میں اس لیے سب سے زیادہ حدیث روایت کرتا ہوں میرے پاس اس لیے اللہ کی محبوب کے زیادہ فرامین موجود ہیں وہ اس لیے کہ میرے بھائی مہاجرین صبحوں کو اٹھ کر بازاروں کا رخ کرتے تھے میرے بھائی انسار صبحوں کو اٹھ کر کھیتی باری کا رخ کرتے تھے اور ابو حریرہ صبح کو اٹھ کر رسول اللہ کے گھر کا رخ کرتا تھا اور ابو حریرہ اللہ کے رسول کے گھر کے باہر کھڑا ہو جاتا تھا اور اس انتظار میں رہتا تھا کہ کب اللہ کے محبوب باہر آئے اور میں ان سے کوئی حدیث اپنے
اپنے سینے کے اندر باپو دیکھا ہوگا کہ فقیر کے طریقہ نہیں ہے کہ تھوڑی تھوڑی دیر کے بعد کہ سبحان اللہ کہو ماشاءاللہ کہو ایمان والا ہے تو 